It's good to be here. Thank God. You know, without Jesus, I could do nothing. <laughs> Not one of my brothers. <laughs> and I was, I'm just glad to be here. I'm, uh, I, was, I was thinking about that song, but i got to leave it on my mind. <laughs> you know, the more I look at the world and the things going on around me, the more I'll be glad when that, uh, the Lord steps out on that cloud and He calls out my name and I meet Him in the air yeah. in my yeah. bread and blood. Yeah, and forever to be with the Lord. Yeah. Boy, what a great yeah. hope. Isn't Amen, it? buddy. <laughs> Praise God. I'm glad that, you know, uh, that, that we had, He gives us all these great hopes. And I was thinking about another thing that Brother Fred asked me to get up. I was thinking about, you know, sometimes my heart gets overwhelmed. And I was reading the Psalms the other day. You know, when my heart is overwhelmed, uh, there's a rock that's higher than I that I can go to, praise God. And he hears my cry, brother. And he hears my call. Even when I can't even pray, praise God. That, that rock I go to, when, he, when I don't even know what to say, he hears my prayer. He knows my groans. He knows everything I need. Yeah. That rock that's higher than I. Praise God. But uh, you know, I was thinking about here in the book of Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 10, I'll read a few scriptures. And I believe, uh, you know, uh, we're begotten by the Word. Amen, brother. We've got to have the Word. You know what? It takes the Word to cleanse our hearts, brother. And you know what? When I get to, when I get fall on my face sometimes, and I can't do nothing else, I just get out my Bible and start reading. Then it clean, it starts down in here somewhere. And it starts cleaning, cleaning me up. Praise God. The next thing I know, I'm gonna, I, I get up out of that valley and I'm up on that mountaintop Amen. praising my God. And I'm standing on that rock that's higher than I. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but anyway, anyway, he says, Moreover, brethren. Oh, brethren. He's talking to the brethren there. So he's talking to me and you there. Now, I would not that you should be ignorant. Well, we, he, God don't want us to be angry. <laughs> he, want, he wants us to get out this blessed old book. He wants us to study it. He wants us to chew on it. He wants, he wants us to eat it, breathe it, think it. Oh, take it wherever you go. Put it in your heart and take it with you. He don't want you to be angry, brother. No, no, we don't. <laughs> Good to Good to see you, Anyway. How, but he said, how all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And, uh, and they all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and of the sea. And all did, a, did any of the same spiritual meat. And all drank of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. Well, that's where I was getting to. That spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. Praise yes, God. That Christ. Oh, you know what? We all, we, we, we born again, he, and we all drink of that same spiritual rock, brother. And he comes in, and he takes that water and cleanses us. Oh, the blood I'm talking about. The clear water won't clear, cleanse you, but it takes the blood. Yeah. See, all them dear children of Israel, they, it says there, they took them up out of, you know, God took them up out of Egypt there, and he, he took me up out of Egypt, I was down in Egypt, bondage and slavery to sin one time, and God took me up out of Egypt, same way he took those children up out of Egypt. Yeah. And they marched right on up to the Red Sea, you know what? <laughs> they was led by a cloud, by a day. And far by night, brother. Amen. Amen. They show up. It takes divine deliverance to lead us up out of Egypt. It takes God Himself to get me up out of Egypt. You know what? I didn't even want to leave Egypt. It took God to get me out of there, brother. <laughs> hey, you know what? I was looking back at the flesh pots. I was looking back at the things I thought I was leaving behind. But God said, You don't need those things. <laughs> After I got to where I was at now, I can see what he was talking about. I didn't think those things, brother. Right. Woo! Praise God. Anyway, uh, we, we, he parted the Red Sea, and he took them up out of there and took them through the bitter waters there and made bitter waters sweet. You know, praise God. You know, so once, once we get them bitter waters, God can make them sweet. Praise God. Anyway, they, uh, they, he fed them the... Fed them, uh, 
angel food. Man. <laughs> Man. Woo. Yeah, the other night, quail came in and he fed his people. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I, he feeds me every day. Man of food. I praise God. He feeds me that sweet food that comes out of this book right here. Oh, Lord. Praise God. I'm glad to know my Savior, Jesus Christ. Anyway, he, he, he fed a man of food, fed him meat of a night. You know, Jesus is that man of food that came that real bread that came down from heaven. Praise God. Anyway, the uh, man of food. He fed them, and they went on up to their little two and a half, month and a half later, and they got to another place, brother, where there wasn't no water to dry in a barren land. Dry. Wilderness. Wilderness. I mean, barren means there's nothing growing there. Amen. Nothing. Amen. There is a, there's nothing there. Let me tell you, when you look at that rock, when you look at Jesus, there's nothing in him to be desired when you look at him through him old dead, uh, dead, lost eyes. There's nothing there to look at. Nothing to desire. You know, when you look at that rock, that rock in the desert, that dry and barren land, brother, there ain't no new car sitting up there. There ain't no stacks of gold sitting up there. There ain't no stacks of silver sitting up there. Whoa, think about it now. There they ain't no new house sitting up there. There's nothing there but an old rock. <laughs> but God said, you know what, Moses? You go up there and you strike the rock. You strike that rock, Moses. And you know what? And the water came gushing out. Let me tell you something. Now, if you've been ever been thirsty and there's no water to drink, you would drink every bit of the gold you can think of, all the silver you can think of, everything you ever had, brother, you would give it for that drink of water. Oh, we got good news. Woo! Yeah, we got good news, brother. Because that when the Moses broke that rock and the water came out, praise God, and the water comes out. And it, it sustained his people there. <laughs> That same water. You know what? That same water, it flows to me today. And Jesus said, hey, you know, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And I will, whoo, give you that living water. Just like about the woman at the well there. You know what? And he said, you know what? You know who I was? You asked me, and you, I give you living water. <laughs> she said, how in the world are you going to get water? You don't even have a bucket to draw with. He, he said, you know what? That water I'll give you, you drink. And you'll never thirst again. You want to offer us so that living water that flows out of the rock, the eternal life. That's truth. The eternal life. When you drink that water, and he said you drink this water, and you'll never thirst again. <laughs> That's life eternal, brother. Amen. Brother. That's life eternal. Amen. You drink of that water. You drink of that water he gives. <laughs> There's a, you know, Jesus, He offers us eternal life. He says, any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. I was thinking about how so many people believe in a God that can't save them. They believe in a God that can't give them eternal life. Yeah. They believe it. They believe it. You know what? If God can't save me, I can't be saved. That's, a That's right, brother. He's the only one can. If I, I can't climb one rung of that ladder unless God That's puts my foot on it. Yeah. Just like he led the people out of Egypt. Just like he, he uh, uh, parted the Red Sea and he baptized them there. He baptized me with the Holy Spirit. He, You know, one day I was sitting in the back of the church and I was hoping, to, you know what, the preacher would shut up because this something was drawing me up that way and I didn't want to go and he wasn't shut up and he kept right on preaching and then, and then all of a sudden he gave an altar call. He said, don't you come on up. You know what, brother, if I could think about it, I was up the front. Amen. Well, I got a drink of that living water that day. Woo! Praise God. The next thing I know, you know what? The preacher said, "What? Can you say something?" I said, "Yeah, I want to thank God that He saved me." That's good enough. <laughs> I thank God that He had mercy on me. Amen. Let's say it. You know what? I didn't even know nothing about the Bible, but this one scripture, He said, "I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy." 
mercy. And I thank God that He had enough mercy. This old dead sinner, this old ugly, stinking sinner, no, it's straight. He had to scrape off the bottom of the earth barrel. And He said, I will have mercy. On whom I will have mercy? Me. Yeah. Woo! And He'll do the same for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> the only thing you got to know is Jesus. Yes. And that draw of spirit, what he draws, you know what it, God says in his word, it pleased God. <laughs> By the foolish of a preacher, save yeah. them which are lost, brother. You want to get your people saved, get them in the seat. You want to get your people saved, you get them in the church. You want to get your people saved, you get them where they can hear the preacher. I'm going to tell you something. Now, I hear about people getting saved doing this and doing that, but I'm going to tell you the only way you get saved is when the preacher is preaching the, the word and word of conviction and the Holy Spirit puts conviction on you and, G G and the Holy Father starts drawing you and praise God. Then, then that's the time that's that call. That's that inward call that saves your soul. Yeah. That's the truth. Woo! Praise God. Somebody shut me up. Sing a song. Anyway, <laughs> thank God for that salvation. I'm going to tell you, if we, we all want to give God sovereignty. Give God sovereignty. And he's the sovereign God and he's not God at all. But that's what I'm going to tell you this morning. If he ain't sovereign in salvation, he's not God. Anyway, won't you come to this Jesus I'm talking about?